which is what I think they want. I had an inkling that chicks might dig scars. I had a lot of scars, all of them in bad places. Ninth grade, I start working out and give myself a hernia, get a four inch scar along my groin. A bunch of scars up and down my left leg from a varicose vein stripping that shouldn't have been done at all. Went out for wrestling, put myself on this not very well advised diet, lettuce and dog biscuits, because I was reading package labels and the, and the biscuits seemed to have a lot of fiber and not a lot of fat. I got very bad hemorrhoids. I'm veiny and hemorrhoids are ass veins. It's all part of the same deal. I'm walking around the school, you know, with a maxi pad in the back of my shorts and pantyhose to keep my leg from falling apart. Plus I'm on Percodan, so I don't really give a shit that I'm like farting for my destroyed rectum every time I go down the stairs. I had all these scars that had shown that I'd been through these various procedures. They only served to be kind of embarrassing. Maybe chicks would dig cool scars. Good scars in good places. I started going as Conan every Halloween. Conan's always like bleeding from a couple places from his sword encounters and stuff. So a couple years I just, I hacked myself up a la Conan. Then Rambo comes out and I don't know, like 85. His scars are in almost exactly the same place as I placed mine. And they had to have like a designer scar consultant who decided that here's where they'd look the best. So I felt validated in that I had good aesthetic taste in my placement of scars. But the deal is that women do not really dig scars. And the few women who do were women that I didn't want to know. Way too scary. So that's a bad choice. I mean, I wish I were more perfectible. There was a girl went to my first high school that she was perfect, except she had a, a honking beezer. She had a suspicious falling off the tractor while drunk accident and came back with perfect nose and then she really, you know, she was amazing. I just wish there were just a couple things that could be messed with on me that would make me amazing. Probably in October of my first senior year in high school. I read a book called Type A Behavior and Your Heart. And at that point, I was a super high achiever. I was in all these clubs. I had really good grades, high SATs, all this stuff. Two alarm clocks, sharp stuff on the floor between the bed and the alarm clock so that I'd poke my feet and it would wake me up. And I just had a lot of stuff going on. They said that a type A person looks back on stuff that happened to him and wishes that it could be fixed or done over. As soon as I read that, I thought, that's an interesting idea, the do-over thing. It's like time travel. I broke into my high school, stole a bunch of blank transcript materials, created a new high school permanent record, gave myself a B average instead of an A average. Wait, 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 You lowered your average? I saw high school as something that could be done right. I just wanted to be a more regular kid, go back to high school in Albuquerque and have a more fun high school existence. So episode one, you get bounced out. I just didn't get in the center. You go home? Yeah. I figured having gotten on there once, there's a pretty good chance I can get 
back on the show. Kept calling, playing the phone game. Eventually, I made it back on. Because you were older and wiser? No. Obsessive practicing. Can you practice to be the fastest finger? You can. I taped a calculator to my steering wheel sideways and used the keypad, the words on a billboard, put them in alphabetical order, numbers on a license plate in numerical order, practice, you know, a few thousand fastest fingers. I have a six-year-old daughter, Isabella. We went down to Disney World for a family vacation. I know that we're going to be spending a certain amount of time, you know, standing around or sitting around, you know, waiting for some Disney thing to happen. So I took my World Almanac, and I tore out all the pages that weren't pertinent, the zip codes of every single town above population 5,000. Don't need that. Tossed those away. Each section was about 100 pages thick, and I'd just take one section with me every time we went out into whatever land we were going. What is Isabella saying about all of this? Nothing. She knows I'm kind of, you know, always lost in my own fog. I mean, you know, what does she care what I'm reading? I wasn't the first one in the middle on that show. The guy who was got all the way up to the million dollar question. I was feeling sucky thinking, all right, there's another time that I'm not gonna make it in the center. I'll have to go back home and wait another year to try to get back in the center again. And all that wasted time. Then they came by and said, we've got time to do one more fastest finger. Going back to high school, I had to manufacture a whole new identity. I wanted to mess with my name to the point where it wouldn't pop up on a computer match and make anybody suspicious. So I turned Rick into my middle name and gave myself a first name that nobody in a million years would ever want to use, that name being Gilligan. So I became Gilligan Rick Rosner. I registered at Highland High in Albuquerque, class of 79. You're applying for a second senior year or you're applying for freshman? No, why? I, there's no point in going back to high school and not being a senior. The seniors are the ones who have the fun and the power. You wouldn't want to go back and be a oppressed little freshman. Highland High was more of a goody-goody school than my former school. And I'm there trying to be a, a Barbarino with my jean jacket, with my collar up and talking, you know, dropping my G's and all that. And I'm a new kid, and I don't fit in, and people think I'm kind of thuggy. I was regarded with suspicion and distaste. 
I didn't have any nighttime employment skills the first time I went back to high school. I was living in this apartment without 